How do you feel about doing this? I feel really good about doing it. Um, by the way, I don't do. I have, sometimes I have a sailor mouth. Is that bad? Oh no, that's not a problem. That's oh fuck, problem. great. Yeah. So, for me, it's. I mean, for doing this is cool, honestly. Can you talk a little bit about what your style says about you? Yeah, I used to wear sunglasses all the time, but everybody wore sunglasses at a time because they thought that it was cool to walk up in the club at one o'clock in the morning with a pair of shades. But when in all reality, the only reason why you were wearing sunglasses is because you're insecure and you don't want that to show in your eyes because you can't look at somebody straight in the eyes. When it's too much going on, people start to stray away and they really can't see the true beauty in who the person is. Pat, you're just on the floor. Oop. Can you talk about assumptions that people have about you based on your style? In the beginning, I was being this cocky-esque, quote unquote, oh, I'm, I'm confident when it's not. I'm just hiding something that I'm very insecure about. I have um, not the most perfect nose. In the past, even myself, I would ask my parents, like, can we get an operation, you know, to get my nose fixed? I used to wear sunglasses to cover that up. But then I'm like, who gives a fuck? Like, this is me. At the end of the day, you know, you are going to only receive what you project. People, when it comes to my personality in the past, with all the dark days, I don't want to come to you because you're shady. Um, and you, you look, you're wearing all black and you're always wearing sunglasses. And I'm like, what, I'm like, I'm a nice person. What are you talking about? But then I had to, you know, step out of me and look back at me and see, oh, okay, I do look like Voldemort walking down the street with a long black cape and black glasses and black gloves and like a bag. If I give you real, I will hopefully will get real in return. Because right now there's no more mask. There's no hidden anything. I'm just giving you 100%. Watch, jewelry. I want this back at the end. I'm kidding. I'm taking it. Can you talk about the biggest struggle that you've had in your life and how you've turned that into a strength? I was the only white kid out of a school of 300 kids, like 300 black, African-American, West Indian, all mixed, but dark kids. I was considered the Caucasian kid, and I'm not even, I'm not even Caucasian, I'm black, I'm an African-American. People used to look at me and be like, oh, you know, you have a disease, and why does your skin look like that? I remember like, I used to go like this to my skin, I used to hold it, and if you lift it, it's white. Kids used to come up to me in school and grab my arm and go, wow, it's so cool. It's like a chameleon. It made me feel like um, diseased. Like I had like some type of disease. It did. It made me feel like very, very different. Even when it came in for, to like love. Whoever I end up being with, whoever you know ends up you know loving me con unconditionally, fully, is a bold person. Why? Because you're seeing something that a lot of people don't see, and you're not allowing my physical to make you look around and so and so, or make you stop you from getting to know me. So. That's something that I feel like I've definitely have struggled with is definitely getting the acceptance from somebody else when I really shouldn't give a fuck. Well, I am who I am, but I let people know. You think that you had it hard. I had it very hard. You had to explain to people why you were black. Let me tell you, I have to explain to people why I was not black and black. So I have to do double your work. And they're like, oh, you don't know, you, you um, I'm gonna be, let me be ignorant for like two seconds. Oh, white people like you. White people like you because you, you white just like them. Excuse me? Um, do you not see my nose? Do you not see my lips and my coarse hair? I had a lot of things, let me see. I was black, I was, I had albinism, I was gay, I was open. Like, you know, these are all the things that like I was, you know? So it's like, oh, so you're not just black, you're black, albino and gay? Oh, child, like it's like a lot of, it's a lot. It definitely is a lot, but I don't lose myself though, never. Socks. I didn't get a pedicure. I'm kidding. When I was growing up, I wasn't allowed to leave my, my area, like my block where I lived on. And my because I don't know, my mom just never wanted me to hang out with the kids around the area because they were really ratchet. And my grandfather lived on the top of us, right? And it was just him by himself. And he had like two empty rooms filled with like junk and stuff throughout the years. Because I wasn't allowed to go outside, I would always go upstairs after school or on the weekends and I would hang out with my grandfather. And, he, and in this room, he would allow me to do whatever it was that I wanted to do. I could be a nurse today. I could be a dancer tomorrow. And, and, it's like, and I remember I used to like take like old dressers and like stack them up and I would take like old lamps and flashlights and like hang them from the ceiling and this would be like my stage. I would call my grandfather like, come in, come in, come in, the show's about to start, you have to see me. I would put like my grandmother's old like hats on me and like pearls and then put my grandfather's old cowboy boots on me. I didn't care, I, would, I wanted to do these things and he never said no. Sure. When do you feel the most vulnerable? Well, I'm most vulnerable 
in the state I think people should be vulnerable at is when you feel like somebody can hold you down, when somebody can help you. It's like, what well, I've been holding myself strapped to this whole time, now I'm gonna let go, but I'm only gonna let go near you or you simply because I know you'll catch me. So it's like a person that always catches themselves releasing to be caught by another person. When do you cry? I don't cry um, alone. I should try that. But I'm a very tough person and not tough because I'm like, oh, I want to be tough because I don't want to see the cry. It's just like, what, what is it to cry for? I think a lot of people look at um, life like, oh, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna fuck up a little bit and then I'm gonna get, I'm get right. Yeah, but I'm letting you know like, this is life right now. You're not gonna get 21 again. You're not gonna get 30 again. So you might as well do everything that you want to do right now and do it well. You know, you're not gonna sit here, even with lovers, don't fuck up. Don't just be dumb and let good things go and things so on and so forth. Like, do it now. If you know that you want to love somebody and you know that you want to give them your all, give them your all then, now, right now. Why did, you, why did they have to go through the chase and the back and forth in the games? Like, why? Can you take off your pants? Gosh, really? No. Can you respond to the quote, in your body is a good place to be? Because it's, it's, a, it's a home, it's a, it's a base. You know, sometimes you have to go backwards in order to go forward. And sometimes I have to go back to be like, bitch, you remember who you are. You know, remember what you worked hard for. Remember what you put out into this world. And that is inside of me. And that's why I think for me, it's good for me to be within my skin. You know, for me to be who I am. Because it allows me to remember. So how do you feel that now that you've done it? I feel limitless. I feel like Beyonce walking through the doors with wind and hair. Because I'm giving you me 100%. You know, I'm present. I don't have to, I don't owe you any explanation because what you see is what you get. Clothing or not. Clothing does not identify a, a person. It just helps enhance who you really want to be.